everybody. Welcome to the sixth installment of our Startups of Interrupt series. As you know, I'm working my way through the 103 startups exhibiting in the, either the Innovation Lab or the Startup Zone at NRF 2022. Today's discussion is on voice commerce. Give it a listen and let us know what you think. I'm happy to have Shope Agarwal from Blue Tag to talk to us about what you're doing. Welcome to the show. So tell us. Hey Jeff, good to have you here. Thank you. Tell us about what you're up to and what your company's doing and the problem you're solving. Yeah, just quickly, I would love to start by sharing how I got here. My background has been in digital retail pretty much all my career. Prior to starting Blue Tag, I was you know, selling jewelry online for over, over a decade. And through that, you continue to see different technologies that are impacting retail. So when these initial voice devices started coming in, like the Amazon Alexas, uh, you know, I knew that it was going to impact retail definitely in the near future, but long term, it was going to play a big role. And so we decided to build it into a platform. And what our platform does right now is that we have a platform that connects with existing e-commerce platforms like the Shopify's Magento. We obviously do a lot of custom integrations. And then we publish branded voice experiences on voice assistants. Currently, we support Alexa and Google Assistant. But the goal is that we want to make sure that these are available for every voice assistant uh, in, in an ambient computing type of a fashion. So yeah, that's the, the, the reality if you look at it as just some numbers around voice commerce in, in general. There's about 150 million smart speakers in the U.S. alone. Last year, in 2020, 35 million um, Americans made at least one purchase using a smart speaker. So when you start looking at those numbers, that is more than 10% of digital shoppers in the U.S. or more than 10% of people in the U.S. are shopping using these smart speakers, which accounted for about $22 billion in voice commerce transactions. When we started this thing in 2018, the figures that we had from 2017 were about $2 billion. It's more than 10 x the voice commerce transaction, which really puts it in track to be growing twice as fast as mobile commerce did. So definitely all the retailers, given that, are taking serious note of this thing. And Juniper just predicted that it's going to be $164 billion by 2025. And the, the, when, you, when we start looking at what people are doing and what are these transactions looking like, as you can imagine, a lot of this happens when people are using their Alexa devices to, to buy items on Amazon.com. And over the last couple of decades, I think it's fair to say that a lot of the retail shopping behavior is formed by, by Amazon and, and the retailers have to meet those expectations, whether it's about the speed of shipping, the ease of return. And now, you know, the new behavior that is getting formed is people using voice assistants to, to, as a part of their shopping journey. So where BlueTax sits right now is that we want to make sure that it's a level playing field for independent retailers, and they don't have to necessarily be selling on Amazon.com or Google Express, but they should be able to leverage the install base of all these smart speakers and voice assistants. And that's exactly where we come in by creating a layer, a platform that lets retailers use their existing infrastructure and existing e-commerce platforms to leverage this new channel of, of commerce. So I've heard a bunch of different terms for voice commerce, uh, conversational commerce, I think, voice commerce, others. What is there one term that, 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 that all the analysts should be using? So as this begins to uh, formalize, what's your, which one do you want? So I think conversational voice commerce, I would say, is a part of conversational commerce. I think anything that has to do with a conversation, whether it's text messaging or bots, all of that is conversational commerce, including IVR. Voice commerce, I think, is, I would say, I would not really call it a subset, but voice commerce definitely is a more specialized area of conversational commerce. It's just, it's different because people don't speak the way they type, if that makes sense. Even when you look at what people type in into Google when they're searching is different when somebody's asking Alexa about or expecting an answer. It's more natural. It's more in a manner where you would actually talk to a person. So yeah, you know, I think analysts can use conversational commerce. Voice commerce, I would say, would be almost a subset of conversational commerce right now. That makes sense. Okay, sounds good. So who, how would a, in, what size retailer do you go up to? What's the biggest retailer that you want as a client? So we are focused on the use cases today that are relevant pretty much for every size retailers. So we have retailers that are getting, I would say, 10 million orders a year down to a retailers just getting a few orders every month. And, and the reason for that is that we're not focused necessarily on doing a lot of custom work. Our goal is to have a repeatable product and a place where people can perform certain actions that are relevant to a lot of the retailers. So a simple example would be the ability to be able to check order status. 
I think a few years uh, from now, I would say a couple of years from now, it's going to seem, it's not going to make sense to think that, okay, only a couple of years ago, we were not able to check the status of every order using any voice assistant. And at that point, it doesn't matter how big a retailer you are or, or how small you are. But generally, where we have bulk of our retailers, they all sit companies that are doing basically between $50 million and a billion dollars. And that's basically where we focus on bulk of it. But that doesn't limit kind of people who are using voice commerce right now. So all of tier two down into tier three, and my old definition used to be a, a, a tier one was was a billion and above. Tier two was nine ninety nine million to two fifty. Tier three was two fifty to fifty. Uh, two fifty to fifty. So you'd be in the uh, kind of standard classification. All of tier two and, and all of tier yeah. three. Yeah, okay. all of tier two. That's a, sure. that's a lot of retailers. <laughs> that's a, that is a lot of retailers. A bunch of retailers. Sure. So how? And the interesting thing about the high end of your target, a billion, even a, let's say a seven hundred million dollar retailer, is a pretty aggressive user of technology. A fifty million dollar retailer is could be or could not be a pretty pretty good user of technology. So, how would they use your? Let's say, how would a hundred million dollar retailer use your technology? Is it? Um, how would they adapt and adapt to what? Two aspects of that. One is how do they actually create that experience? I'm not sure if that's the question. Yeah, well, that's a good. That's a better question than one I asked. <laughs> let's take that one <laughs> and go with that. And so we we have a platform. Essentially, once you create an account with Blue Tag, you can essentially go into the platform and. We have integrations with all of these existing e-commerce platforms. So let's say somebody was on Big Commerce or they were on Shopify. They can just go and connect their stores right in the dashboard to uh, Blue Tag. Once you do that, then after that, it's, it's a complete no-code solution. So we we have a lot of different areas. For example, you can customize the way you want to you know, welcome somebody when they start having a conversation with your voice assistant. You can customize the way visual assets for a lot of these smart speakers that now have screens. So you know, like Daco Show, the Google Hub, even all the new smart televisions are coming with voice assistants built into that. You can configure your uh, kind of personalities to say within the dashboard, and then you are able to add additional features. So you can then go to the section where you can say that, okay, I want to enable order status. I want to enable a reordering functionality. I want to enable a feature where people can look for the latest deals and coupons store locator and things like that. Once they do that, then they can decide if they want to publish it on Alexa, Google, both, whatever they want to do. So, you know, that's how it would work for that $100 million uh, retailer. We do provide a set of managed services, which usually uh, end up getting used by larger, slightly larger retailers in that tier two uh, space. But there we would, you know, provide a dedicated person who can walk you through that initial process of setting it up. Interesting. We're a big fan of low code on this pod. So uh, many time I hear the word low code and now now no code, uh, it's a uh, music to our ears. So I probably have a pretty good idea, but where do you see adoption? Where do you see your solution in the adoption? So a lot has changed over the last, I would say, 12 to 16 months. What happened was that when we started this thing, I would say early 2018, late 2017, it was still very new. The voice assistants were there, but they were really getting used just for basic things like listening to music checking the weather and setting a timer kind of stuff. But the pandemic really, unfortunate circumstance, but it really accelerated what we do. One thing that happened through the pandemic was that smart speaker usage went up over 35%. And people started looking for more things that they can do than just those few different things, which were very tasks that they were doing for themselves. And, you know, once they started seeing that usage, then we started getting a lot of interest from retailers as well, who felt that they want to be able to provide at least certain aspects of their business to their customers. Uh, so the way we play, see right now adoption is that every single retailer has either put that out on their roadmap or has already started implementing that or already are live with a voice experience that they can provide to their customers. The ones that are not are already thinking about it. And like I said, it's already on the roadmap over the next 12 months. So we've gone from what two years ago was almost like an experiment to see if voice commerce is something that they want to just do the internal hackathon and see if this is something that makes sense to now saying that it is a thing. We will need to be a part of this thing. It's just a matter of where in their priority list or in the roadmap it sits. Interesting. So you're going to be an NRF next month? Yep. And is that your first trip to NRF? First time we're exhibiting, yes. Exhibiting, yeah. okay. So if somebody comes by, first of all, do you know, see, I should probably know that. Which booth are you? Are you you're in the Innovation Lab or the Startup? You're going to be in the Innovation Lab. Innovation Lab, okay. What If somebody comes up to your booth, what are they going to hear, assuming that they, they aren't they aren't going to make it back to NRF? What, give, them their, give them the mini NRF experience here. What would they hear? Regarding Blue Tag mm -hmm. or just generally no. overall? No, let's let's leave the rest. I'm a little nervous about what I'm going to find. I don't want to know. Yeah. I'll, I'll be back there and I'll walk into whatever I'm walking into. If they... 
if somebody can't make the show, but but wants to hear your NRF pitch, what would that be? Absolutely. The reality is that I think it's fair to say that retail has really changed forever since the beginning of pandemic and everything has gone digital and people are, it's more competitive than ever before. This online uh, digital kind of retail experiences, uh, you have to be where your customers are. When you start looking at the number of voice devices that are out there, like I said, 150 million plus devices just in the US, your customers are already there. You need to make sure that you're able to provide different elements of your shopping experiences and your journey to all your customers. And it's essential for you to start your journey with voice now and not wait. A lot of these people had missed out on the mobile and, and even online digital presence. You can't miss out on voice because ambient computing is the future, whether it's retail, hospitality, you name it. And you need to make sure that you present making your, your customer's life easier. It doesn't mean that you have to provide every single aspect of voice commerce to your customers today. It could be something as simple as, like I said, starting with just providing them order status. We are seeing increasing customer loyalty. We are seeing your customer being more connected with your brand. And all these things are going to be very relevant for you. Our message is, if you haven't thought about voice yet, or if you haven't adopted it, this is going to be the year to do it. Otherwise, it might be a little bit, a bit late to play catch up. Yeah. So you jump to the next question too, then. So 2022, uh, there's not an entrepreneur on the, on the planet. When I ask that question, it's insane. It's, it's all thumbs up. And I, as an analyst, I would tend to agree with you. It's hard for us to talk about anything positive coming out of the pandemic. It's just been rotten experience for literally the world, but uh, there's no question there's, there's been a massive technology acceleration coming out of that. And I think you're tapping into that is what I heard. Yeah, absolutely. And then you may look at 2022. I think I'd even go as far as to say that it's not that Every single thing that we see over the next few years, when they start looking at the numbers for 2025, they say 164 billion. There's other num uh, studies that show that by 2030, 30% uh, of commerce is going to happen. by. So we're not even looking at that 2020 is going to make all that impact when it comes to transactions. But I think in 2020, I would say most of the retailers will have figured out what their initial voice experience is going to involve, uh, have, whether it's something just being able to let them locate your store or whether it's something being able to check on product that fits in stock. It might not even be a transactional base, but there's going to be some sort of uh, a plan that every retailer should have by, by the end of this coming year. Very interesting. Hey, a lot of a lot of college kids listen to the podcast. Um, I'm part of the Center for Retail Transformation at Georgia Mason University. And a question, I get two questions all the time, and I'm turning those straight over to the experts, the entrepreneurs I talk to. Um, what advice would you offer a budding entrepreneur if you if you could talk to yourself a few years? I think patience is something that I always talk about. I mean, I've, I've been an entrepreneur for, for over 20 years now, and everything takes a lot longer than you think. So plan accordingly. And I think I always tell entrepreneurs that you have to really focus on your mission and why you're doing it, because without that, it becomes really to build something that is taking a lot longer than you imagine. But with that said, if it comes to retail, then there is no better time to be an entrepreneur in that space. There has been more innovation in retail over the last 12 to 18 months than we've had over the last 15 years. And, and like I said, you know, be an entrepreneur, especially if it's NF, NF, NRF related, it's going to be something to do with retail. There's so many different opportunities, but like I said, patience is still something that's key. Interesting. That's the first time I've heard that, but I absolutely buy that. I've always joked as an analyst when I hear a vendor and not just an entrepreneur uh, or a startup, but the biggest vendors ever, when they say something's going to be two years, uh, just as an analyst, I just double it. <laughs> yeah, Whatever yeah. it is, double it. And, and, and so far over, over my career, that's been pretty accurate. What skills do you use now that you wish you would have paid a lot more attention to either at the start of your career or in college? I think... I would say the skills that I use now, and again, I think I've become more patient. I'll go back to that particular thing that I have become more patient. There were times when I used to get frustrated earlier on in my career where things are not moving as quick as I wanted to, but that's changed now. And I think having a team that believes in what your mission is also, I think I would put pretty much up there that maybe I didn't have it earlier part of my career. And I think finding the right team members who are more driven about your mission or what you're trying to do and having, seeing them believing in the same mission, I think is something that makes your entrepreneurial journey as a founder a, a lot more enjoyable and a lot easier because you're not, the last thing you want to do is try to convince your own team that what you're doing is going to make sense. You, you're always going to be convincing retailers, your customers, which in our case are retailers, you're always trying to be convinced investors on your mission. But if you find the team members who, you know, 
believe in what your mission is, it, it really brings the best in the company out and it makes the other two aspects of convincing the customers and the investors a lot easier because your company is mission driven. Wow, that's um, some great advice. Hey, how can people get in touch? Yeah, you can reach out to us just by, you know, sending us an email at info. That's info at blue.ai. That's why that's info at blu.ai. I'm happy to hear myself. I'm on Twitter, just my first name, last name, underscore, Shilpa Garwal, underscore. Or you can just email me at shilp at blue.ai. And I'm happy to answer any questions regarding our product. Or if you want to just geek out about voice or retail, I'm happy to do that as well. Yeah, that's, it's a pretty exciting space. This one came out, uh, from my perspective as an analyst, learning about everything, it sort of came out of nowhere and all of a sudden it, it, it just showed up big. And I think it's going to be, I, I do think 2022 is going to be a pretty darn exciting year for you. Thanks so much for the time today. Good luck next month at NRF. Uh, all of us that are going, let's all hopefully have a great and an exciting and uneventful health type experience at the show. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for having me. This was great. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. For more info, refer to the pod notes below. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving us a five-star rating and review. It really helps us grow. I'm your host, Jeff Roster, analyst at large. If you want to connect, follow us on Twitter at Jeff PR or at Brian Sathanation or connect with us on LinkedIn. Visit my website at roster.retail.com or Brian's at